Hey, Ken, how's it going? Going pretty good. Good. Uh, we've had a pretty weird week, and what I mean by we is I mean all of us. There's been a lot going on in the news. Um, this is not typically the type of content that we create, <laughs> but I think given the fact that there have been toxic chemical spills across the U.S. this last week, I thought um, it would be really good to bring you on um, and ask you some questions that could really help our, our viewers and our communities as they uh, think through how to best protect themselves against toxic chemicals that are now in the environment. So we had, um, in case you guys haven't been paying attention for some reason, um, there was a uh, toxic train derailment in Ohio. There was also um, one in South Carolina. There was one in Houston, and then yesterday, today is um, February 15th, 2023, there was also a um, horrific nitric acid spill um, in Pima County uh, in Tucson, Arizona. So um, <coughs> the the Tucson Fire Hazmat team has been working um, very closely on that, and they actually issued a stay-in-place order uh, yeah. rather than having people yeah, back Pima to County, they use nitric acid to uh, to refine gold. Okay. And uh, well, one whiff of that and your lungs are gone. So that's a really bad toxin. Okay. So let's talk a little bit about like what's going on um, because there's, there's a whole bunch of issues and it seems mm. like things are kind of only accelerating um, and we want to help people stay calm, be prepared and know how to deal with these types of situations. But um, why don't you tell us just a little bit about um, in general, wh what do you, why do you think all of these accidents are occurring kind of like at the same time? Well, I think it's just a general breakdown of, uh, of our situation. Here, the, the railroads haven't been maintained mm -hmm. and uh, they haven't been trained like the the, uh, the one in South Carolina, the, uh, the the switch guys left the switch open mm -hmm. and that's what caused it, just plain incompetence. And so poor training, breakdown of equipment and uh, rails, it's just there hasn't been the reinvestment needed to sustain, you know, the infrastructure. And now we're seeing, you know, decades of, of neglect are now catching up to this. So this isn't going to go away anytime soon. It'll take quite a while to... Uh, repair the existing damage. Yeah. And then in Ohio, um, it sounds like they just made a really inappropriate decision to actually set those, chem once the spill happened, they decided just to set those chemicals on fire and burn them off, which is a really, really bad decision to make. Yes, it was probably, well, they, they had a choice there and they just, uh, that's the choice they made. You know, I can't, you could second guess them, but yeah. I wasn't there, but uh they didn't want it to blow up, so they burn it off. But, you know, it made a, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, the, all the chickens in town died. Yeah, and, and so now we're dealing with, all the with water, uh, toxic water yeah, and, in the and area. So, and that, but the thing is, we didn't, learn, well, I guess we didn't learn about it. But what's more importantly, the people in Ohio and that area didn't learn about it till really till days afterwards. Yeah. So they they didn't really, you know, a lot of the people, because that cloud went everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. It just doesn't stay in uh in Palestine, uh, Ohio, and it kept uh, it kept going east, and uh, a lot of the people didn't know about that because uh, you know that that toxic cloud, especially you know a lot of those toxic clouds once they get up, they kind of stay in there. But if there's ever rain that comes down, mm -hmm. that stuff will come right out with the rain, and uh, and then you have real problems because now it could contaminate. That's how my friend lost his uh, his thyroid. Uh, I think I mentioned that in another one. He was back in the atomic days in the fifties when they blasted that. Uh, those nuclear weapons in the atmosphere, mm -hmm. and uh, he he worked. His family had a dairy farm in uh, on the east coast, I think Delaware, and just one of those clouds by chance just you know came by and it rained out just over the dairy farm, and the and the iodine one thirty one got into the grass, which got into the cows, which got in the milk, and he lost his uh, thyroid. You know, mm -hmm. so that can be those kind of things happen. Yeah, there was also in um, at the end of. Uh, November, uh, there was also a um, a spill in Hawaii. Uh, I believe it was on Oahu Island, and they um, they spilled thirteen thousand gallons of um, PFAS, which is F triple A chemical, which is a um, a chemical that they use as a fire retardant. It's oh. highly toxic. It never 
Oh yeah, it's it never for, goes that's a forever away. Kid. It's a yeah. bromelain, it, uh, chlorofluorocarbon. And bromelain it's in thing. the water supply now, and there hasn't been a lot of communication around what does that mean yeah, for the that, residents of Oahu. I think that was the U.S. military that did that. The whole the yeah. whole island there around Pearl Harbor is just toxic mess. They mm-hmm. they had leaking fuel jet fuel pipes, and they got in the water supply. I mean, it's just a nightmare there. Yeah. So we've got we've got four states right now that are dealing with some pretty mm-hmm. serious toxic chemical um, and environmental pollutants. So let's let's dive in. Ken, what do you think is most important for people to know right now about what they can do to protect their health? What are the top... Um, and again, before we dive into this, I should say, Ken's not a doctor. I'm not a doctor. This information is strictly for educational and entertainment purposes only. And you definitely need to check with your healthcare provider if you have any questions. But um, I am a chemist, so I can, yeah. uh, so let's so talk I can about, tell you what those nasty chemistry. chemicals are about. Yeah, let's talk about it. And what, what are your top recommendations for either supplements or natural things that people can do to support their body, um, not only to detox, but to protect themselves? Well, the number one thing that you can do is uh, filter your water. Okay. That's the number one thing. Because especially if you're getting river water, I mean, they run those things. You know, they basically just dump the sewage system from the town upstream into Mm -hmm. the thing. And there's a lot of things that can't be filtered out, like pharmaceuticals and... uh, and, Birth control pills, Prozac. All that stuff. Anything that you're... Everything, yes. All kinds of other nasties are in the water. So you really have to uh, put a filter on your water. And even they have even ones for the shower... There's good ones that you can just do your whole house, depending on where you live. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, if you've got some nice well water. Yep. And, uh, and you know, but you should get, to, if you do have that, you should probably test your well water as well. Okay. But uh, filtering your water is 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 a number one uh, most important thing, I would think, that to, to protect yourself against nasty chemicals. And then the other is, um, is the food that you buy. Because, you know, think about it. The water that you drink, obviously, the air that you breathe, that's, uh, you don't always have a lot of control over that. Be but uh, you know obviously if you were living in a better place but sometimes we can't we're just where we are yeah and so so that's uh, that's that's a bit more difficult. So let's talk one. about that when you say the food that you buy. Let's oh. be let's be a little bit more. Well, let's, well we're going to look at it for organic foods. Uh-huh. And they found in studies they found that if people ate organic fruits and vegetables for just two weeks, ninety mm-hmm. percent of the herbicide and pesticide burden in their body that could be determined by testing went away. Really. Just two weeks of eating organic food. That's so, pretty cool. And, of course, there's other things. Of course, we also it's like the processed foods. You know, basically everything on the inside of the, so avoid of the, those. Of the, the grocery store, all those highly processed foods. You want to eat basically food as close to nature makes it as possible. And uh, the highly processed foods are just full of all kinds of – basically read the labels. Mm-hmm. The general rule is if you can't pronounce the word on the label, you shouldn't be eating it. Right. <laughs> that's, that's a general rule of thumb. Mm-hmm. Okay. So <clears throat> clean water, fresh foods, um, as it relates to these chemicals getting up into the atmosphere and raining down, what should we be thinking about when we're – when we're outside, when we're exercising, when we're with our animals, if you're in part of the country that could be at risk for exposure to these nasty chemicals, what well, what do you need to be aware of? Well, of course, there, and yeah, I mean, you just have to be aware if there's been a problem like that. And also, you have to be aware of like a lot of times you've seen people, like in the summertime, people go out there and spray their lawns yeah. with incredibly toxic pesticides <laughs> and herbicides, and they put like a little sign on them. But you know that 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 stuff is volatizing uh, volatizing off the lawn, and people are breathing it in. You know the pet your runs dog on is it, the person. On yeah, it. I mean yeah. it's just it's just basically it's like you know you're you're basically killing your family if you put that spray that stuff on your well, lawn. Well, and then it's your pet, terrible. or if you're walking in your neighborhood and your yeah, pet's exactly, walking yeah. through someone's yard, and you happen to if you're letting your dog poop in a neighbor's yard with one of those little signs, yeah. you're, you're it's getting on your pet's feet. Your dog's going to come back in the house. The dog's going to mm. jump on the bed, get on the couch going to get tracked all through your house. Yeah, exactly. And there's there's just, you know, the United States allows all kinds of pesticides and herbicides and other chemicals that are completely banned in the rest of the world. Mm-hmm. So, so you can't, you can't expect the, or the, or any of those other uh, organ, three letter agencies to protect you. They just don't. They work for industry. They don't work for you. All their executives come from industry and then they're going to leave and go to industry. So, I mean, you really want to take care of yourself. You have to protect yourself because you're not going to get any help from yeah. from uh, your government's not going to protect you. Sorry, guys. <laughs> it's just the way it is. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, so, but let, like, let's talk about right now, like, let's say you live 150 miles outside of this area in Ohio where this is happening and there's puddles, there's fresh standing water. Like how long should you just be cautious about being outside in water, in the environment, especially if it's snowing or raining, what do you need to be thinking about? Uh, I would probably, well, first off, you want to filter your water uh -huh. and you want to probably stay out inside for a while. Uh, most of those chemicals, especially stuff in Ohio, those are extremely volatile and extremely reactive. Okay. So they're going to react and go away. It's not like radiation. A lot of those things, like one of the ones that makes when they were burning that vinyl chloride, it's making phosgene, which is a nerve gas. Right. But, and they uh, use that in World War One. Yes, exactly. And, but the thing is that stuff will go away pretty quickly, you know, because it will react with something. And the goal is you just want to avoid the environment where it's in until it reacts with something else and uh, before it reacts with you. And uh, and that's, you know, like all the chickens in town died and all the uh, A lot of the pets fish. died. And yeah, when, those, when they tell you to evacuate, you probably need to get out. <laughs> you need to go away quicker than they say and take a long time to come back. So if you have been exposed to some of that, like some of that nerve gas and you're having physical pain, what... What should you be aware of? Are, is this going to last forever? Or is it a temporary situation? Well, it's the damage can last. Uh, basically, you know, as I said, one of the things that you can take is uh, carbon-60 because they actually did that in that famous Botry study where it uh, extended the lifespan of rats by 90%. You know, actually, it would have been longer except some rats had an accident. They, were, uh, they had a uh, problem, uh, you know, because it took five and a half years. And the rats live, you know, way longer than they expected. So they did a lot of other experiments when they were doing that. Other, so there's multiple experiments in that paper. And one is they did an experiment with carbon tetrachloride. Okay. And carbon tetrachloride is nasty, as nasty or nastier than uh, any of those things that leaked out of uh, the, the railroad cars. And they found they basically, and they, that really, a lot of those things, what they do is they destroy your liver. Because your liver is basically the organ which detoxifies your body. Okay. And so if you get a toxin in there, it's going to damage your liver. So they basically, they gave, you know, they have one set of rats had C60 and the other set, the control group didn't. And uh -huh. then they exposed them to carbon tetrachloride. And basically all the, the livers of the control group that didn't get C60, their livers were destroyed. Whereas the livers that had, of the rats that had C60 were completely undamaged. And, uh, and it's not a lot of the toxic chemicals, it's not the toxic chemical itself that causes the damage. It's as the toxic chemical breaks down, it release, it creates high energy oxidative radicals. And then those oxidative radicals go out and do the damage. And so uh, C60 stops those oxidative radicals from doing the damage. And so even though you have the toxin in you and it's being processed out, it, it the C60 prevents the damage from happening, especially with these extremely you know, uh, reactive and toxic chemicals. That C60 is just a lifesaver in that regard. Okay, so in that case, if you've got some C60, uh, should you, and you you have a concern about, um, oh. about being exposed to some of these chemicals, is your recommendation that people take more than they normally would for a period of time? <clears throat> yeah, I would double up if you know for sure you've been exposed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, and that's one of the things about C60. It's, it, you know, it does have a moral hazard because, you know, it gets rid of hangovers and probably bad lifestyle choices. But also, you know, there's no matter how good you are, no matter how much organic food you eat and do everything, there are still things out there that are going to sneak in under the radar that you don't know about. Yeah. And uh, even in organic foods and vegetables, the little pesticides and herbicides sneak in. It's just one of those things in our generally contaminated environment. You know, like those forever chemicals. They're just you everywhere. You can't do anything about that. Yeah. Once you've been exposed to the PFAS, uh, you've been exposed. Yeah, so. and so basically... And most we, of us have because they actually spray this freaking fire retardant on a lot of clothes. And if you see uh, really cheap children's clothes are often sprayed down with this. And sometimes they'll put an actual tag on the, the clothes to warn parents like, oh, hey, and they're marketing it as if it's a good thing. Your child's pajamas have been sprayed with this fire retardant. Yeah. Um, most athletic clothes are also sprayed down with it. And so these are these are not good chemicals. They cause issues with, you, with your hormones, mm -hmm. with your endocrine system. Like they're really, really nasty. And, and in most countries like, you know, Japan and Korea and pretty much every European country, they're banned. Uh, whereas they're allowed to, to happen here. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, um, all right. So <clears throat> just to summarize, filter your water when you can look for organic food, utilize C60 to help, um, your body address some of those toxic chemicals. What else? Anything else? 
Uh, those are basically the things. Of course, everything else that you need to do. You know, I mean, proper exercise, good sleep, avoiding toxic uh, situations besides, you know, people. Besides, because uh, toxic damage from people, people is, it's, it's can, real. Be, can be even worse than Whether you know them or chemicals. not, they could even be people on the television or whatever place yes. that you're consuming your information. Uh, if if you have people just kind of yeah, beating you, really you down need, with yeah. fear, you don't need that. Yeah, you don't need fear porn and uh, all that other stuff. I mean, that's a lot of that stuff. That's one of the ones they went to digital because they can hide subliminals and other mind control technologies. Oops. And basically, there's nothing you can do because that aims that's aimed at your brain stem. Your frontal lobes can't block it out. So basically the only way to avoid that is just turn off your television. Yeah. In fact, they found that turning off your television and not watching those television is the number one thing to help with mental health. So. Oh, thank you. So turn off that television. Okay. Thanks, Ken. Yeah.